Hello, my name is Ace. I'm just an ordinary person. Maybe a little lonely, but not because I have any problems or because I like to be alone. I just didn't meet anyone to have a relationship with. I'm a very simple person. I spend most of my days working and going out with my friends on the weekends. Nothing too hectic. We just get together to have a drink and watch a soccer game. Well, to be honest, I would be lying if I told you that I am totally alone. I have a faithful and cute dog named Chad who I named after the drummer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Although I admit I'm not being entirely honest, aside from my boring life, I had a secret. I'm an OnlyFans model. This was one of the only things that gave my life excitement, an innocent and exciting side that no one at my job would expect from me. No one knows I do these things. And more than for the money, I do it for the thrill of doing something different. There really isn't much that sets me apart from anyone else besides that little secret. But when danger lurks, that means absolutely nothing. I used to think that the craziest and most dangerous things happened to those who were asking for it. I always knew that crime was real and could happen to anyone. But who would notice me? Someone who doesn't attract attention. Who doesn't have the nicest house in the neighborhood. Who doesn't have a flashy car and has a dog. Someone that may work in OnlyFans, but there is absolutely no way someone knows it. Although apparently, someone did. And that person was not only a criminal... He was a monster. He was the most cruel and sadistic person that could appear. And if he hadn't received help, he would surely be one more victim of this terrifying monster today. It was a Tuesday night. I had just returned from work. As soon as I was home again, I went to open the patio door to smoke a cigarette and look at the sky, as I always used to do before checking my only fans. During that time, I kept the dog locked inside the house. Chad was in bad company but he could stay in the kitchen eating while I spent 10 minutes in complete peace and quiet. The night was very starry and it was much quieter than usual. This was because my neighbors had gone on vacation and their kids weren't around. After smoking my cigarette, I relaxed and leaned back, almost lying on the grass when I heard a noise coming from inside the house. It was a slamming door. At first I wondered if Chad was the cause, so I went into the house to check it out. Once I was inside, I walked around the house and looked for the source of the sound when a terrifying thought crossed my mind. There was no way Chad could have knocked on a door. When I just got home from work, all the doors were locked with a key I left behind the TV in the dining room. And even if he accidentally left the door open, Chad is not the type of dog to walk into any room uninvited, specifically the one where I have the only fans equipment. By the time I started to notice all these things and suspect that maybe something strange was going on, it was too late. When I got to the source of the sound, I realized that it was the door to my room. And behind it, locked in, Chad was crying. I went to open the door, but before I could open it, I felt a horrible, painful prick in my neck. When I turned around, I was confronted by a terrifying man who easily gave me a bear hug that completely immobilized me. The man was huge. His body was also gigantic. It was as if a being with superhuman strength had appeared in my house with the firm intention of attacking me. Meanwhile, I still felt the prick in my neck, and after inspecting it with my eyes while the huge assailant squeezed me, I entered into absolute panic when I realized what was the source of my pain. This man had stuck a syringe in my neck, and all the liquid from that syringe had entered me. I know your little secret. What? Who are you? What do you want? You've been a naughty boy, haven't you? Let me go. What did you do to me? All those photos and videos you take. Do you think you are beautiful, don't you? What do you mean? What was in that syringe? You'll see. <laughs> I pushed him and started to run around the dining room, taking out the syringe and throwing it on the floor. But I could not advance many meters because before leaving, the man jumped on top of me and threw me to the floor again. Once we were both on the floor, he jumped on top of me and began to choke me with all his strength. I put up all the resistance I had, and even though he was taller and more muscular than me, I managed to free myself and give him a blow that took him away from me for a few seconds. I took advantage of that time to stand up and keep running. The door was locked. I couldn't escape through there, and I didn't even have the keys. My only option was to run to the courtyard and jump into the neighbor's house. I ran at full speed into the yard until I felt something electrocute me, and I fell to the ground, my body aching behind me. I could see the psychopath very close to me, approaching me with a taser gun in his hands. Do you think you can escape, naughty boy? That easy? P please, please, let me go. 
immobilized and shaking from the pain. I could only watch as the man came closer and closer to me, showing me a small fork he had taken from my kitchen. At that moment, I noticed that he didn't grab a knife or something sharp. He grabbed a fork. We are going to have so much fun. We are so lucky you have so many cameras, <laughs> naughty boy. This man was really very sadistic, and he was going to enjoy hurting me. Once the man was a few centimeters away from me, I was thinking about how to give him the last fight, how to escape from this situation that seemed inescapable, and the answer came by itself. Chad jumped violently towards him, biting him on the arm and making him fall to the ground in pain. After a few seconds of fighting, the man was about to hit him, but he couldn't do it. I took advantage of those seconds of distraction to grab a small ceramic statue I had in the yard and violently smash it into his head, knocking him unconscious. It was all over, and my dog and I were safe. Once I called the police, they surprised me and arrived immediately. It was as if they were already around, secretly looking for who I had caught. Soon after, the truth came out. The man who stalked me was a former psychiatric patient. He wasn't really crazy, but somehow he faked insanity perfectly well to avoid going to jail. Once he escaped from the psychiatric hospital, he took his evil to a new city, my city, where he was seen wandering around. But until that day, they could never catch him. I was never the same person after that day. I left OnlyFans, not because there was something wrong with it, but now I'm afraid, afraid that someone else wants to come for me. Maybe someone that recognizes my room. I don't know. I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm really scared. I'm still alone, or rather, with Chad. I still look out for him, remembering every time I see his eyes that night, he jumped out of the window of the room I was locked in, went around the yard, came straight to face the danger, and saved my life. I guess you are all wondering what was in that syringe and what that man injected me with, right? I'm sorry to tell you that I don't have an answer. They didn't find anything strange at the hospital, so it could have been anything. Maybe something harmless, Maybe something disgusting, or maybe now there is something inside me that still can't be detected and will wake up in the future. I'm sure by now you must have heard a lot of OnlyFans horror stories in which the OnlyFans creator was either stalked, kidnapped, blackmailed, or even killed. Well, when you put out that sort of content for the world to view in hopes of moving some quick money, these things are bound to happen. But do you know the other side of OnlyFans? The side of the men and women who subscribe to the platform and spend huge amounts of money just to see these creators. This is my own story and how OnlyFans, or specifically an OnlyFans creator, almost made me lose everything. When I was 24, I was your average Joe. I was a bit overweight, looked average, and had an average job in an accounting firm. Although my life technically had everything a man needs to live, I never had a girlfriend. I'd always been the shy, awkward, nerdy kid growing up, and nothing really changed in my early 20s either. I tried meeting girls the old school way, but got rejected and called a creep many times. Then I tried the apps, and... There, too, was no luck. I was so frustrated and jealous seeing my friends have multiple relationships and hookups that I was desperate. That's when I discovered OnlyFans while surfing on the internet. I joined the platform without thinking much and started surfing through creators. All the women on this website were beautiful and way out of my league. They also had millions of subscribers. But after surfing for a while... I came across the account of a female creator named Rose 22. Rose 22, or should I say Rose, had only 35 followers. She was a pretty doe-eyed brunette with a petite figure. I was instantly infatuated with her. I subscribed to her account and been watched all her content in a night. In no time, I became obsessed with her. I used to wait for every update on her account. I commented on every video and photo she posted. I started watching her content multiple times. I was so distracted that I lost my sleep and my appetite. My performance at work was suffering and I wasn't communicating with my family either. But I wasn't the type of fan that would stalk the woman or blackmail her. 
but I did message her every day in the hopes of getting a reply. But I never did. Until that one rainy night, I was surfing through Netflix, and my phone pinged. And finally, there was the reply I had been desperately waiting for. Rose had finally responded. Hi. That's all she had sent. Hey, I'm James. I'm a huge fan of yours, I replied. For an hour, I got no reply. I kept checking my phone, but nothing. Then, around midnight, I could finally see the three dots hovering. Thanks. I appreciate your support. I've seen all your messages. Thanks for all those. It seemed like Rose was texting me just to thank me and nothing else. And I didn't want to end the conversation that easily. I wanted to talk to this girl, get to know her better. How are you? I texted. I'm good. How are you? She replied. Well, how could I be anything but great while looking at your pictures? I texted. And when I didn't get a reply soon, I thought I'd crossed the line. But after several minutes, she typed back. <laughs> You're funny. That's when I knew I had her interested in me. Even though I was bad at talking to girls face to face, I was good at chatting with them online. I could make them believe that I was a completely different person. And that's what I did with Rose. Quickly, we became good friends. And after talking to this girl, I was almost in love with her. She was not just beautiful, but incredibly understanding, kind, and sweet. If I was obsessed with her before, now... I was head over heels for this girl. And she, too, loved my outgoing, flirty, and confident personality, which was something I portrayed myself as. However, after weeks of talking almost all the time, one night, Rose didn't reply to any of my texts. I knew she was still posting on OnlyFans, but the number of her subscribers was limited. I was so scared and disturbed that she wasn't talking to me that I constantly checked my phone. I went as far as thinking she had ghosted me. I started imagining scenarios in my mind as to why she didn't reply, and eventually went to bed. The next morning, however, there was a single text from my Rose. I'm sorry I couldn't get back to your text last night. I'm dealing with stuff, and I won't be able to chat as much. I was devastated, as it was the first time such a pretty girl was talking to me, and now she would not as much. What happened? Can you tell me? You know, I'd love to help my girl as much as I could. It's not your problem to deal with, James. Leave it. She replied. Hey, if you're upset, I'm upset. Please, let me see if I can fix it for you. My mom does drugs and she owes a lot to this one drug dealer. That's why I started OnlyFans in the first place. I honestly hate it. I don't like nude pictures and videos for myself online, but I can't help it. I knew this was a good way to make fast cash, but I can't make any money here as well. I also have a little sister who goes to school. I have to look after her, too. It's all too much to bear. My two jobs plus this OnlyFans aren't enough to run the house and pay the debt off. If it were up to me, I'd happily date a nice guy like you and live my life happily. That last statement hit home, and I decided to do anything I could if she was willing to give me a chance. How much do you need, baby? James, you don't have to do that. I'll find a way. It's okay. I can't accept money from you because I won't be able to pay you back. It doesn't matter, Rosie. I don't want a drug dealer harassing you or your family. I can help you out, so just tell me the amount. At least after this month's installment... I have to pay around two grand. I had much more than that saved up. I didn't think twice and sent her the money. Since that day, there was a shift in our relationship, and she opened up to me a lot more. Let me in her life as much as she could through texts. I was dying to talk to her and video call her, but I wasn't at all what I told her I was. My voice wasn't the deep, sexy one she imagined it to be and I wasn't the tall, dark, handsome man she thought I was. 
and she never asked to get on a phone call or a video call. After that, whenever she was struggling to cover her expenses, I used to send her money. This went on for months, and my savings were depleting. By now, I had a girlfriend, a real girlfriend. I told people at work about her. I even told my family. They were all very happy with me, but also a little surprised when I told them that we'd never met in person. By then, I knew where she lived, where she worked, her phone number, everything. Although my love life was at its all-time best, my finances were getting worse. My savings were all gone. I didn't get my yearly increment, as my performance was below average, as I was always talking to Rose. But I didn't mind it at all. I thought that I could earn money, but a love like this was once-in-a-lifetime phenomena, and I didn't want to lose her. Her mom had accumulated a lot of debt, and I was helping her pay for it. Eventually, I got a loan against my home to help her. Rose and I were so close. Until one day when I logged into OnlyFans, and I couldn't find her account. I thought she finally no longer needed to do it, and so she deleted it. I texted her, asking about it, but instead of getting a good morning text and my answer, I got a message that the number no longer existed. I freaked out and texted her multiple times, but I got the same message. I tried to find her OnlyFans account too, but it was gone. I had no way to get in touch with her. I was going crazy with each passing moment, but there was nothing I could do. This was such a hit to my self-confidence that I stopped going to work and just holed up in my house. As weeks passed, my job sent me an email stating that I was fired for being a no-show for weeks without any notice. My parents hadn't heard from me in days. I was a mess. One day, my sister showed up at my doorstep and demanded an explanation. I finally broke down and told her everything. She quickly caught on that it was a scam. The thing I considered love was a scam. Her husband was a cop, and he investigated on my behalf. Turns out Rosie's number was out of service. The address where she lived was that of an abandoned house, and the money that I sent her was transferred to an overseas account through the dark web. This was a well-planned scam. As for Rosie herself, she turned out to be another OnlyFans model who had quit OnlyFans, and her content was being used without her permission. Someone had stolen my whole life savings, my house, and my job from me. It took a while for me to recover, both mentally and financially. But I did bounce back, and now, a decade later, I have a loving wife and a real family. Do not fall for all these things. Work on yourself and build yourself first. My name is Elsa, and last month, I turned 22 years old. As soon as I came of age, I moved out on my own and went to college. I always knew I would beat the world, but being older is more complicated than you think, especially when paying rent and college tuition. I got a job at McDonald's, but it was short because I needed time to study. Unfortunately, with that job, I can barely pay the rent, and I always end up using my savings, but I see how there are fewer and fewer, and I'm about to run out. I need to find another job, but whatever I did would take away a lot of time from my studies, and I couldn't continue going to college, so I was desperate. One day, a follower of mine on Instagram asked me if I sell content, and I told him I didn't. He politely said I should, since I'm a very pretty woman. I thanked him for the compliment but told him that it's not what I was looking for at the moment, as I've always been somewhat shy and never liked to show too much of my body. I also asked him how it worked, since I needed the money, and he explained everything I needed to know and even said that if I opened it, he would be my first client. Although he had been accommodating, I didn't trust this man. He didn't have any publications, and in his profile picture, there was a drawing that my brother and I used to see when we were younger. I asked my friends, who also had only fans, and they said it would be a great idea. Not only am I very active on social media, 
but also a lot of my followers are men who started following me from when I left my profile on my Tinder page. After inviting my friends to my house and a long photo session, my profile was complete. I saw many things in my profile that I would not have dared to put on my own, but for some reason, I invited my friends. They had no problem doing it for me. When they left, I looked at the pictures they uploaded in amazement. It was amazing what a little alcohol could do to me. I posted my OnlyFans profile on my Instagram stories and even reopened my Tinder account to self-promote. I then put a shortcut to OnlyFans from my profile and felt like I was ready to start making money. So I went to sleep and prayed to find good news for the next day. When the morning dawned, I took a giant leap to my computer and logged into my OnlyFans profile. And to my surprise, it was a success. I had at least 10 messages from people asking me for pictures. Among them, I noticed the one who had recommended me to become OnlyFans and told me that he would be my first client. I entered his message first, and he not only congratulated me for becoming an account, but also asked me for videos of me without clothes on. I had recorded several videos like that, so I just waited for a few minutes for him to think I was doing them on the spot and sent them to him. As he was attentive to my message, this person automatically accepted and made the payment. After a while, he replied that the video was great, and the next day he would ask me for more, and he did. All the clients talked to me to ask for content, and the moment I gave it to them, they thanked me and disappeared. But something was different with this user. He was clear to win me over, which was very annoying, but something about him caught my attention. He had the same tastes as me, watched the same movies as me, and it was as if we were connected. He understood me perfectly and seemed to have known me all my life. The chats with this user went on and on, many times flirting with me, and I must admit that I had fun doing it. Without mistakes, over time, the rest of my clients also began to flirt with me, but I never paid any attention to them. I told all of them that it was a professional relationship and they could only ask me for content. Most of them understood and kept asking me, and for those who didn't understand and got angry, well, luckily, there is the option to block. Thanks to OnlyFans, I could not only dedicate myself to study, but I even had plenty of time to do the things I liked. One day, I decided to visit my parents and my brother. I hadn't seen them for a long time. So I was very excited. I had to lie to my parents and brother about my job at OnlyFans. So I told them that I had been given the day off from work at McDonald's. The day flew by, and I was so excited. The day flew by, and I was having a great time. My 16-year-old brother was not at home, and so I insisted that my visit be a surprise. According to my mother, he was about to return from playing ball, so I decided to wait for him in his room to surprise him as soon as he arrived. When I walked in, his room was still as messy as ever. I approached his computer to pass the time and noticed that there was already a browser open. So curiosity got the better of me, and I opened it. When I went in, my eyes couldn't believe what they saw. Pictures and videos of me, in which I was completely naked. I went to another tab I had opened and there I found out he was the user I had been talking to. He was the one who recommended me to open OnlyFans and who had been flirting with me all this time. I quickly understood why we were so similar, and he seemed to know me so well. He was my brother. He knew everything I liked and used him to talk to me. I felt very dizzy and threw up so I took a seat and my feet bumped into something. It was a pile of used napkins. I quickly understood what this meant. My brother didn't have the flu. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone to play ball. In my moment of greatest anger, I heard someone walk through the door and call my name in surprise. It was him, just back from playing ball. Elsa, don't get mad. It's a friend's account. He just showed it to me and I didn't know it was you, he said, scared. I knew he was lying. 
I know him perfectly well, and I know he is a lousy liar. I went to him furious and slapped him a few times, crying. He didn't put up any resistance. He just cried and asked for forgiveness. Suddenly, he stopped resisting and pushed me violently against the bed. His expressions had changed. He was visibly angry and looked like a different person. He began to threaten me and told me that if I didn't leave him alone, he would tell everyone about my account. He also told me he would forward the pictures to everyone I knew, so if I wanted to stop this from happening, I had to leave now and send him free pictures. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was furious. I told him I was going to tell our parents everything, and it didn't matter if they found out. I had only fans. At least I lived alone. He was going to get kicked out of the house. I was lying. As angry as I was, he was my little brother. I could never do anything so nasty to him, but what he had done to me was unforgivable. Not only did he trick me into giving him naked pictures of me, but he extorted me and threatened me. I kept threatening him and saw how his angry face started to break. He started to cry again for fear of being kicked out, and I kept telling him that his life was over. At this, he did something I would never have expected. He opened the window and without saying anything to me, jumped out of it and threw himself headfirst on the ground. I went to the window and screamed my head off, not believing what I saw. My parents came out of the house terrified and saw their son's corpse with his head open and began to cry seeing me at the window with confusion. I was a murder suspect for a while, but the police determined that there was no struggle and it was a voluntary suicide. I told my parents everything that happened after that. I didn't feel I had the energy to lie to them. They kicked me out of the house and told me they never wanted to see me again. Time went by and I continued at OnlyFans, but I never interacted with any of my clients again.